Well, here we are again back at the castle. Dustin's being lazy, so I had to uh, get Dad to come out so that if anything crazy happens, he can at least make a phone call since I'll be in the man lift a little bit today. But it was not supposed to rain, and uh, apparently they changed the report, and it looks like we're going to get this very annoying misting rain till about 10 o'clock. But today is foundation day for the addition. I know I'm excited. Let's get this going. Well, all right, step number one was to clean the area up <laughs> because this guy had pretty big mess. We got it all cleared out. Got the man lift out of the way. We got the loader bucket on the tractor. We've got the laser set up. Now what we have to do is take our receiver and our grade rod and we got to find out what the highest point is somewhere along in the area that the footer is going to be. So the footer is going to come straight out from the building there and then 20 foot over come out and then come 20 foot this way. I've got a load of 20, uh, nope, those are 11s, a load of 11s that was brought last week and we're going to use those 11s to level out this entire area with the tractor so that we can then just set that footer on well it's going to be close grade it's not going to be perfect but it's going to be close and we can stake it off and get this sucker formed up so let's get this going all right we got our receiver on now we just got to find that high spot and i know this is probably honestly the highest spot but what we're really worried about is the high spot where the footer is actually going to go opposed to the area that's just going to be filled. We're going to check this corner here. Yeah, I've got some, some fluff over here that we can hammer drill out of there, so I'm not as concerned about it being there. Let's see how close this is. That's pretty much spot on. That's pretty much spot on, just a tad lower. Tad lower. About an inch lower and then it falls off. So we know that this is a decent set point here. We're not gonna need much gravel, are we? Looks like we're about an inch low. So basically it slopes away from the castle, which is a good thing. And I did dump some water up here earlier and it runs out the left edge. So there isn't gonna be any water in this crawl space go all the way to the castle. It's gonna be impossible. And then this forma drain that's gonna sit on top of grade, any water that comes up to it will go into it and out that same corner. Let's see how far off it is over here. Only about three inches. Well, all right. That's not going to take much gravel. That is our high point back there in that back corner. So essentially, we're going to set everything to that level all the way out. We're going to get this 20 by 20 marked out with some paint so we know where we're going. So the goal for this addition currently, before I check the center of the bump out, I want this ICF wall to basically set right against this cinder block wall so that the rock that I end up putting on this face runs right into this ICF and I can tie the two roofs together in some way, shape, or form to ensure that this is not going to end up with any moisture coming down in it. So this block here measures an inch and a half, yeah, an inch and a half. My addition is 20 feet, so I need to go to 20 foot, one and a half inches. Which is right there. And that is really close. If you guys remember, if you don't remember, go to the previous videos of Addition Talks. 
but I wanted to hold this addition over to where it does not go past that wall up there at the top that's kind of weird and leans in. I want to make sure that it stays on the inside of that cinder block and this would be the outside of the ICF wall right here. Now what we got to figure out is our 20 foot this way. Stay on there, tape measure. Oh, you want to come, come yeah, you want to come hold this. It's, those blocks aren't perfect. Hold it right there in that corner and bump the castle wall right there. This one will be an exact 20 feet. We'll square it up here in a little bit. Oh, went a little too far. I like to make kind of an arc at that 20 foot mark. So we do our cross dimension wherever the arcs cross is where the corner is. Let's walk to the opposite side. Yep, bump the wall down lower. close there. And now the fun part, we really need to have two tape measures and we need to figure out our cross dimension so that you can go down the wall there and we can get that squared up. But right now, that's really all we need. We've got a line of sight here so we can get this filled in with gravel and then we'll do all that all over again and truly stake our corners. Well, that's the outer extremities. Now we got to get some rock in there. Let's get some rock leveled out.
we've got her pretty close we're within a half inch everywhere you guys can see the piece of rebar right there that's going to be the outside corner i am offsetting this footer four inches out so that if i ever want to rock the outside of the icf long term i've got a brick ledge to utilize which is the footer and i don't know if you guys noticed or not but this is mst bar you all if you haven't seen the factory tour go back on the channel fiberglass rebar mst bar i beat this in with a sledgehammer just like i would do with metal rebar and it's perfectly fine it didn't shatter it didn't bust i tell you it's the first time i've truly ever used mst bar i like it so far but these are the four outside corners i should say three we'll slip a forma drain corner over that we'll slip a forma drain corner over this we'll slip a forma drain corner over that and then we'll start building in between the reason i say three corners is that four inch offset brings this piece of forma drain four inches from this corner so there's got to be a double 90 right here to get around this corner and we're probably going to have to cut score that block or something so we can tuck our forma drain right up against this part of the building and then again we might just i don't know i really don't know i gotta figure that one out yet so we're going to start in that corner we're going to work our way around get this forma drain outside put together and then it spaces itself for the inside so let's get some forma drain erected
So some of you might be asking, what the heck did he drill holes in that side of the former drain for? Well, I drilled through the former drain and into the actual castle down there. You guys can see that one a little bit. And I have this PC concrete fix your things epoxy. And this is a two part epoxy, but the tip mixes it into one. So essentially you drill your hole into your concrete, you fill it up with this, and then you shove a piece of rebar in there. And that ensures that my footer is tied to my building. And I'll do the same thing on that side over there to ensure that these footers are actually tied to the castle. So if the castle happens to move, this addition will move with it. And as I go up with the ICF wall, I will also drill holes all the way in this area here and epoxy the rebar into the castle and tie the ICF into the castle as well. You guys will see that whenever we start doing the ICF portion, but right now we're still on the footer. There's no concrete in this yet, and I've got about an hour before the concrete's not available, so we're going to get after it. Let's get some epoxy in these holes and get some rebar driven in there. Well, this stuff is pretty easy to use. You just put it in a regular caulk gun, and as I squirt it out, that two-part epoxy turns into one. I'm trying to, or maybe here would be a good view for you guys. I've used similar things before, but it's been a while. You can see it coming up the tube there, mixing together. Once you get it all the way up there, you can see it's a totally different color now. We're going to stick her through the hole in the former drain. Hopefully you guys can see the tip go into the hole in the wall there. We're just going to squeeze it in there. Until we see it come oozing out like that right there. Relieve the pressure. We got our 20 foot stick of rebar laying here. Shove it in. Go to the other end. Make sure there a nice little air bubble came out. Make sure it's tapped all the way in. Hopefully you guys don't fall down. I believe that's bottomed out right there. Do the same thing. And here. like we're starting to ooze out maybe yep relieve the pressure take our second stick run her up in there ah. that one bottomed out I felt it bottom out so now you can see there there's two pieces of rebar tied into the castle those pieces of rebar are 20 foot long and go all the way to the corner and then those two pieces will overlap those pieces so on and so on time to get back at it working by yourself sucks There's a lot to do to get ready for concrete and then when the concrete shows up you gotta go crazy getting it in the hole man you guys are dirty let's get back at it So I just thought I should show you guys something here. On this outside, you can see that I have metal grade stakes. These are 30 inch grade stakes and they work great. But whenever you have concrete 
under your footer. Don't pay attention to my little jog down there. Looks like I cut that back piece a little short, but that's okay. I'll still have plenty of room. Um, whenever you have concrete under your footer, those metal grade stakes don't work because you can't drive them in there. So you got to hammer drill a hole. And what I would do in the past is use either a concrete grade stake for a street board. The problem is those are expensive and you don't want to leave them in there. This MST bar, a lot of you guys that use metal rebar, I'm telling you, you need to check this stuff out. You saw me cutting it on time lapse. I'm on the same battery with my grinder and I have cut, I don't know, probably a hundred already. And essentially what I'm doing is I'm hammer drilling a hole through the concrete, driving the fiberglass rebar in, drilling two holes in it with a regular drill on the same battery there too. And I just want to show you guys, I can't get over how easy it is to work with this stuff. And I can't believe that more people don't use it. So you can see the hole I drilled there. That's done. Take my fiberglass rebar, put it in there. Hammer it to the bottom. There's the bottom. Take my regular drill. Drill two holes in it. And I don't want to hit the cracks. That's really not what we're worried about here is proper placement of screws. But if I tried to drill metal rebar, I would have been on battery 700 and I probably would have got three stakes in. Yes, I got to be careful not to pre-drill a hole in the former drain, but I'm putting them in at a little bit of an angle so when I get it screwed off, it puts pressure on it and ensures that it bites in that half inch hole. So there's hole number one. I take her easy on the start. And I'm not pushing that hard because I don't want to drill a hole in my former drain there. So now I got my two holes drilled. I can put my two screws in there. Get my grade rod. Ensure my grade in this location is proper. Oh, I was holding it at an angle. There we go. Looks like I need to put an eighth inch of pressure on it so my body weight should take care of that. Put, oops, put that screw in. Put that screw in. I mean, it would have taken me forever to drill metal. And now, to ensure that it doesn't mess with the screet surface, which is the top of the former drain, watch how easy this is to cut. I mean, come on. You can use the same battery all day and I can grab, well, you guys saw it on the MST video. If you didn't see the MST bar video, go back on the channel. I love this stuff. This is the first time I've ever worked with it. It's light. It didn't get hot laying over in the sun. It's easy to cut. I can drill holes in it and use it as grade stakes. I mean, it just really made today easier and I'm the only one here. If I was having to drill metal rebar, I'd, I'd get nowhere close to being done. But anyway, enough of that. I just want to show you guys how I think it's awesome, how easy it is to work with. I've been working with it all day and I'm not itchy. Nothing, nothing. I mean, that's what everybody, oh, well, it's fiberglass. It's going to make itchy. Whoops. I've cut it. I've touched it. I'm not itchy. Let's get back to footer work.
hey baby Hey, baby. Well, there you have it. That is the form a drain, which forms your footer and your drain. The benefit to form a drain is once I get all of this up concrete poured over there, everything to the proper elevation, any water that gets through the rock is going to go into that form a drain. That form a drain is perfectly level all the way around. There's one outlet that I haven't put in yet. You can see it at the end of the hardy backer there. We'll cut a four inch hole over here right off the corner of the building. And we'll snap that in at the lowest point that we can and run a four inch drainage pipe over there so all the water that comes out of it goes over the hill it also drains the inside so any water that does make it under the footer if it builds up in here which again you guys saw earlier that concrete is sloped away from the castle it will then go into the former drain also all the way around over and out that hole why did you do form a drain in the center mat well for this addition the prints are on the inside we'll talk about those when we actually start putting the uh, icf up but in this addition on the far end of the 20 feet there is a stairwell that goes up to a platform turn 90 step on another platform turn 90 and go up again and this is that center wall for the center support of those steps the outside can attach to the actual ICF wall, but the inside has got to have a framed wall all the way up so the treads can attach to that wall. And that is an extra foundation for all of that steps weight that's going to be thrown in the center of those steps. I'm not 100% satisfied with how that turned out, but once I get concrete in there, the ICF will actually sit on top of the former drain right there, just in that corner where it lays up against the corner of the actual building. So there's one spot that the ICF will actually sit on the former drain, but in order for this stuff to work properly, you have to have it continuously connected so that there's an so that you can only have one outlet. And that's what we have here. So that is former drain day. I did not make it for the concrete today, but I did tell them that I want concrete tomorrow. So we'll be here tomorrow pouring concrete. It's only two and a half yards, but uh, the minimum order is four. So I'm also gonna frame up a box here before I leave that I can put the extra concrete in because I can pick it up with the forks on the tractor and move it wherever I wanna move it. I can cut it down. So I think I'm gonna do like a four by six and if I end up needing to throw a board on the inside and make it four by four, that's fine too. But that concludes today's video of laying out and installing Forma Drain. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. And as always, like, comment, subscribe.